Well, it is amazing to be here on a good Sunday. <laughs> that was close. I almost said Good Friday. Uh, but it is a good Sunday, amen? It's a good, good Sunday. Uh, Jesus is alive. Oh, we didn't do this. So I'm going to say Christ is risen. You say he is risen indeed, yes? Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. One more time. Christ is risen. Yes. Is risen amen. Awesome. You guys are amazing, and it's awesome to be together. If you're new or visiting, it's so good to have you. I pray that you enjoy uh, your time with us, and you're most welcome back uh, whenever you would like to come back. In fact, we're in a series at the moment, a preaching series called I Am, uh, and uh, we're continuing the series over the next two weeks, and so if you'd like to come and hear uh, the rest of the series, please do come through for that. It will be absolutely awesome. Uh, but it's Easter Sunday, and not only is Easter Sunday the greatest day on the Christian calendar, it is the greatest day in the history of the world. Amen. We, we need to remember this. It's not just about the Christian calendar. The resurrection of Jesus is the greatest moment that ever happened in the history of the world. That Jesus died and was buried, but he rose again three days later. And I want to remind you and say it again and reiterate, James said it on Friday, that his, his resurrection was literal. It, it wasn't a myth. It's not a fairy tale. Jesus did rise from the dead, and that is why we can stand here in 2023 saying that you're a good God, that Jesus rose from the dead so that we can be here today and forever. And so it's an awesome, awesome day, the most important event in the history of the world, this resurrection. And when we speak about resurrection on Easter, when we speak about it around the cross, it's, it's a resurrection that many people are very familiar with. Uh, you would probably have to be, have, you know, lived, you, you're one of these people that really have lived under a rock, and there are them who, who, who don't know about this. But most people know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's, it, it marks the most important event in all of history. But within this series that we're in right now, the I Am series, what we're doing in this uh, is we're looking at words of Jesus, uh, things that Jesus said about himself. And so they're known as the I Am statements of Jesus. And they're recorded for us in the Gospel of John. And uh, John actually records seven I am statements. On Friday night, we looked at I am the good shepherd. And uh, we're going to look through more of those in the coming weeks. But uh, interestingly, there are seven I am statements. And uh, seven is the biblical number for perfection, right? And so it's not a big surprise that Jesus has got seven things to say about himself because he is the perfect uh, God. And so we're going to be looking at, at all of those. And uh, on Friday, we looked at Good Shepherd. Today, we're looking at another statement that Jesus made about himself when he actually said, as recorded in John, I am the resurrection and the life. Everybody say life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And although we're super familiar with looking at the resurrection around Easter time, we found Jesus saying these words in the Gospel of John in chapter 11. And the story that's going on uh, at this point in time is, is it's around a family that Jesus was very close to on his time here on earth. It's the family of Mary and Martha, and then they had their brother Lazarus. And they were very close to Jesus, and Jesus was very close to them. They were all close to each other. And at the time of this story, Jesus and the disciples were actually, uh, they were in Jerusalem, they were ministering around Jerusalem, but because Jesus' life uh, was in danger. There were people who were now wanting to kill Jesus. Jesus actually went outside of Jerusalem, and he was ministering uh, outside of Jerusalem. And while him and the disciples were out there doing their ministry, Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, the brother of Mary and Martha, becomes deathly ill. When Jesus receives word about this, he hears about his friend Lazarus being ill. Uh, he says in verse 4, Jesus heard it, and he said, this illness does not lead to death. He's talking about Lazarus' illness. It does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And so, uh, quite surprisingly, Jesus doesn't go to the family. He's heard about it. They've sent for him, but he doesn't go immediately to the family. He stays where he is, and he continues with his ministry outside of Jerusalem. And it was actually only days later when we read that Lazarus had in fact died, Jesus says to his disciples, okay, come now, we're going. You know, Jesus always did things differently. We can read about it in verse 17. It says, now when Jesus came, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, 
And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. So Martha says to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection in the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whatever, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And he asks the question, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And so we have the statement, I am the resurrection and the life. And actually that word life is a major theme. We see it right throughout the Gospel of John. The word life appears 36 times in the Gospel of John, compared to no more than 17 times in any of the other Gospels. It's a major theme. In fact, out of the seven I am statements that John tells us about, three of them contain the word life. We've got I am the bread of life. We've got I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then we've got this one, I am the resurrection and the life. It's a major theme that John's trying to communicate to us in this gospel. And I think he's got a purpose behind what he's doing. And I think his purpose is clear and it's very well summed up in three verses that I want to just quickly look at to see what was John trying to get at in, in his gospel. John chapter 20 verse 31, it says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have in his name, life in his name. In 1028, it says, I give them eternal that they will never perish. And then in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so life is such a major theme here. And Jesus says these words about being the resurrection, and he says about being the life. And so what he's declaring right now, even today in this moment, is Jesus is declaring to you right now that he is the life today. He's declaring to you right now that he is the resurrection today. In fact, if you could imagine, Jesus is standing before you right now saying, that is who I am. I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he's inviting us into that. On this Easter Sunday, 9th of April, 2023, he's declaring to you, he is the resurrection today and he is the life today. And that's good news for us. Amen. Yes? <laughs> Amen. And so we need to ask the question, what does he mean? What would Jesus mean by this when he says he's the resurrection and the life? Well, I want to jump back into the story later on in chapter 11. Spoiler alert, Lazarus does rise up from the dead. So we're going to quickly read about it. It says, then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor. Now, just a little side note, James sent me the original uh, King James version of that verse, and it says, Lord, by this time, he stinketh. <laughs> and that's the, that's, you can't get more legitimate than that, right? That's the King James version. That's not the new improved King James version. That's it. Lord, by this time, he stinketh. <laughs> And he would have, it was four days later, right? So the, the, the ESV has put it nicely for us. There'll be an odor. <laughs> for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips, his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. That's, that's the resurrection of Lazarus that we have an account for in, in John. But I hope what you're starting to see is that there's a difference. You see, with the story of Lazarus returning to life, can you see that Lazarus had to be commanded out of the grave? He had to be commanded out of the tomb. It was a force outside of Lazarus. 
It was outside of Lazarus' control that he was raised to life. But how many of you know that it is different with Jesus? Jesus, the Easter resurrection, was not something that happened to Jesus. It wasn't something outside of Jesus' control. Nobody had to command Jesus to come out of the grave and back to life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Can you see the difference this morning? The resurrection and the life is what Jesus actually is. And so God didn't have to go shake Jesus awake. He didn't have to call Jesus out of the tomb. Jesus didn't have to be let out of the tomb. He didn't need to be unwrapped from his burial clothes. Jesus came back to life. Jesus arose. It's what he did because it's what he is. He is the resurrection and the life. And so there is a major difference this morning between saying, I am the resurrection and the life, and saying, I experienced the resurrection, or saying, uh, I am given life. He's saying, I am those things. Resurrection and life are not something that Jesus does. It's not something that Jesus experiences. It is what he is. He is the life, and he is the resurrection. N.T. Wright puts it brilliantly. He says, the future has burst into the present, the new creation, and with it, the resurrection has come forward from the end of time into the middle of time. Resurrection isn't just a doctrine, it isn't just a future fact, it's a person, and here he is standing in front of Martha. And the same is true this morning. Jesus is a person, and he's standing in front of you today. Here stands Jesus in front of you this morning. And the question is, do you believe it? Do you know Jesus? Do you have a hope in Jesus who is standing before you this morning, inviting you into the resurrection and the life? Because I want you to know this morning that there is no hope without Jesus. Amen. There is no hope without him. But he's here in front of you, calling you into this life this morning. It's the same with all the I am statements. Every I am statement is an invitation from Jesus into that life that he's calling us into. It's into a life of following him. It's into a life that can only be experienced by those of us who are in Christ. And that is what he's calling us into today. Verse 26 says, Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And that's interesting because it's saying over there that there's a, there's belief in Jesus, absolutely, but there's more than that. There's more than the belief in Jesus. It's saying that there is life in Jesus. Just say life for me really loud. There's life in him. There's the life that you live, the life that Jesus lives. We get to discover that resurrection life for ourselves, And that is what he's calling us into today. It's personal. And so as we invite it into this resurrection life in Jesus, the question is, what does it look like? What does that look like for you and me today? Well, I remember once I was driving along the highway and I drove past a church and there was a massive banner on the side of the church and this banner said, we believe in life before death. I almost drove off the highway and gave myself an early death because it caught me by surprise. We believe in life before death because how many of you know as Christians, we can talk a lot about life after death. We've got a lot to say about life after death. And in fact, we don't really know much about it, but we can talk about it quite a lot, can't we? But the amazing thing is that in Jesus, there is life before death as well. As Christians, we give so much thought to life after death, but there is life before death. And with Jesus saying that he is that life, he is the resurrection and the life, he's saying that there is life right now. He's saying that life in Jesus is available to you right now in this life. All that Jesus is, is available to you and is available to me right now in this life. Jesus says, I am that. I am the life. And he says that he'll come to give us life and he'll come to give us life in all of its fullness. And that is what is an offer for us today. And so the good news of Easter is an invitation into a new and changed life. A new life in Jesus that comes with abundance and it comes with freedom and it comes with joy and it comes with purpose. He's offering us that life today. He's offering us a new life that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and we get to live that out. It's absolutely awesome. And I wonder as followers of Jesus, do we know that life? 
And are we living that life? And are we living our lives in step and in power with the Holy Spirit? Because I want you to hear today, He's inviting us into that life. And it's absolutely amazing. We need to live out all our days in that life, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so the message for us this Easter is that the life that we have here on earth can and should be characterized by hope. If you take your notes this morning, that's what we're talking about. The life that we live here on this earth should and can be characterized by hope. And I've got three points just in the time that we have left this morning uh, to talk through what that looks like. The first characterized by hope that we're going to look at is that there is hope even in death. There is actually hope even in death. You know, death is one of those topics that we don't like to talk about, right? We're a little bit uncomfortable talking about death. It's not, not a nice subject to talk about. And yet the last time I checked, the death rate was still hovering at plus minus 100%. The last time I checked, it could have changed. But death is a reality. Death is actually a common problem that every single one of us face. Because sin entered the world, we are all terminally ill. It's just a matter of fact. It's part of our life here. But we don't like to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. I mean, can you imagine putting on a dinner with your friends and inviting them over for dinner? And then when everybody sits down, you say, let's talk about death. I mean, I I feel like the atmosphere will leave the window very quickly, right? It's not something that we do. We're uncomfortable with it. It's not a happy topic. But yet death is something that affects all of us. We all have it in common. We will all be affected by death in one way or the other. And the other thing about death is that it's often so unexpected. You know, even like Martha and Mary, they probably weren't expecting that their brother would die. It it comes so unexpectedly so often. They probably thought that he'd be healed from his sickness and he'd carry on uh, as normal. But James chapter 4 verse 14 reminds us, it says, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. That is our life. And so our life can end unexpectedly, and it often does. Some of you might remember a friend uh, who was a partner with us here at City a few years ago, Chris Luther, and he was such a legend. Uh, 27 years old at the time and just so passionate for Jesus. Renal, you remember Chris Luther, I'm sure. And uh, loved Jesus and loved to worship. 27 years old, and he, and we were in a preaching series called, uh, it was all about the afterlife. And uh, that specific week in church, we had spoken about hell. Uh, and uh, the week coming up, we we're going to be speaking about heaven. And Chris came to me afterwards and he said, I'm so irritated. I, I really wanted to be here for next week. I really want to know about heaven. I want to find out about heaven. But I'm not going to be here because I'm, I'm away working. And that night he went home and he went to sleep and he died. Unexpectedly, he just died in his sleep. Nobody expected it. Nobody could have seen it coming. But the amazing part about that story is he wanted to know about heaven. And now Chris has experienced more of heaven than any of us know. He is there. But as heartbreaking as that was, and as heartbreaking as his death was, Chris was a follower of Jesus, and he knew that death could come at any time. And he lived in the knowledge that, death, that, that life is not permanent. He had the knowledge that life is not permanent. And that is how you and me as Christ followers should live. That this life is not permanent. It's just a mist that can disappear at any time. And death simply means separation. That's all that it is. It's a separation. Physical death is the separation of the body and the soul. But how many of you know that as followers of Jesus, we live in the the assurance that our souls are eternally connected to God through Jesus. Amen. We live with that assurance. And in Jesus, we can agree with this verse in Corinthians that says, in fact, it was in one of the songs, death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? You know, as Christians, as Christ followers, we can live this life with a hope, even in death. We can live the life that we we don't have to be fearful or frightened or scared or frozen. Because for Christ followers, death just means moving from this life to eternal paradise with God. That's what it is. It's a movement. We get to move from this world of pain and suffering into an eternity with God where there is no death, no sickness, no sin, no disease, no suffering. Amen. There is hope even in death. 
and that is how we can live this life. And so even Jesus' declaration that He is the resurrection and the life should cause us to live this life in hope. Amen. So that's number one if you take your notes, that there is hope even in death. The second thing to jot down this morning is that there is hope in the face of our enemies. There is hope even in the face of our enemies. You know, Jesus has already defeated the greatest enemy. He's defeated death. And so that means that the countless lesser enemies that we might encounter here on earth are well and truly defeated as well. Some of you need to hear that this morning because I know that there is pain and I know that a lot of you are dealing with pain and you're dealing with heartache. But Jesus wants to remind you this morning, Easter 2023, that there is hope even in the face of that that your pain is real, that the enemies that you might encounter are real. But Jesus wants to remind you, he has already overcome your enemies. He's reminding us of that this morning. It's too easy to believe in the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday, and yet we struggle to trust Jesus to help us in our day-to-day, moment-by-moment struggles. Amen. It's too easy. Jesus cares deeply about the reality of the pain that we face. I hope you're hearing me this morning. Jesus cares deeply. He knows that you're facing pain. He knows the pain that you face, and he cares about it. When we carry on in the story with Lazarus in verse 28, it says, when she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now, when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, Notice these words. He was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. You know, the language that is used there when it says greatly troubled actually suggests anger. It actually suggests that he was so upset even to the point of getting angered Why is that? Because Jesus truly sees the consequence that sin and death have brought to humanity. And that actually angers Jesus. And so when they take Jesus to where Lazarus was laid, we find Jesus weeping. And he's weeping because he understands the the reality that sin and death have brought upon humanity. And that is the shortest verse in the Bible, but yet it conveys so much of the compassionate heart that Jesus has for you and me. Amen. So much of the compassion. Jesus sees the pain we go through. Hear that this morning. He sees the pain you're going through. He knows the enemies that come our way. But let this Easter Sunday serve to remind you that there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. If Jesus, the resurrection and the life, as he says that he is, could raise Lazarus from the dead, if Jesus, the resurrection and the life, uh, could, could, could provide comfort and care for Mary and Martha all throughout the days of their lives, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is there for you through every struggle, every trouble, every heartbreak that you might experience this side of heaven. Amen. Jesus cares and he sees and he knows. He cares about your pain. And so I want to say this morning that we can and should live in the hope of Jesus even in the face of our enemies. Amen. I really pray that you hear that this morning, that Jesus knows and Jesus cares about every pain, every struggle that you are going through. He's there for you in that, but he has also overcome that in Jesus' name. The last one, and the band can join me back on stage, that we're going to look at this morning, is that there is hope in new life. Everybody say new life. That's right. There's hope in new life. You know, the words of Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life, actually shows the unquestionable, undeniable uniqueness of Jesus. There is nobody else that can say, I am the resurrection and the life, right? Not even his disciples could say that. Not even the religious leaders of the days uh, could claim that. 
It's Jesus and Jesus alone that can say, I am the resurrection and the life. And it's true. And he's pointing again to the fact that he is indeed God. Through these statements, he's drawing us to understand that he is indeed God. And so when Jesus made this bold I am statement, he is showing us that he is in the business of changing lives. When Jesus was on earth, he was in the business of changing lives. And I want to tell you that Jesus is still in the business of changing lives. Can I get an amen for that this morning? He's still in that business. He's changing lives. And so there is a marked difference between us merely existing on earth and truly living on earth. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. He doesn't want us to just merely exist. He calls us to life. And so it is a true statement to say that with Jesus, you never truly die. But I want to say to you this morning, it's equally true to say that without Jesus, we never truly live. Amen. In Jesus, there is a new life that starts and never runs out. Even in death, it doesn't run out. It's new life that Jesus gives us for eternity. And Jesus is saying to us that he is that new life. It means that he imparts that new life to us today. I just want to remind some people that Jesus didn't come to somewhat improve your life here on earth. Amen? He didn't come to just make your life a little bit more tolerable here on earth. He came to give us new life, and we get to experience that new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what he invites us into this Easter Sunday. And not to make you all feel down about it but like Lazarus we are all dead <laughs> that's the truth of the matter like Lazarus we are all dead but like Jesus made Lazarus alive he came to make us alive amen he came for this he came to make us alive through his death and through his resurrection and through the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus gives us a new life and he gives us a new heart and he gives us a new capacity to be everything that he created us to be in the image of Jesus that is available to you and me today I don't know about you but I can't get the smile off my face as I say it we have new life in Jesus and he's asking you come follow me into this new life I just want to tell you today, to see what age groups we have here in the room, that life doesn't begin at 20 or 30 or 40, I'm just checking, or 50 or 60 or 70, uh, just checking out whose else is over there. Life doesn't begin once you've matriculated or once you've got your degree. Life doesn't begin once you've got your job. I want to tell you this, life doesn't begin when, you, when you're married. Life doesn't begin when you have kids life begins at the cross amen that's where life begins it doesn't matter how old you are life begins at the cross and I want to say today that Jesus didn't just come to add years to your life he came to add life to your years oh, I pray that the penny just drops in you this morning Jesus wants to add life to your years we're not here to just exist church I want to encourage you this Easter Sunday, don't waste your life, but surrender your life to Jesus and then use your one and only life as worship to the one who gave it to you. That is who we are and that is why we exist. Don't waste it. God has got incredible plans for your life. Listen to me this morning. God has got incredible plans for your life. No matter if you feel it right now or not, I want to tell you it's true. He does. He's got incredible plans for you. He will use your life and he wants you to know today, Easter 2023, that yes, there is hope in this life. Amen. There is, li there is life, there is hope. And so with Christ, you never truly die, but without Christ, you never truly live. He is the resurrection and the life. He's our only hope in life. He's our only hope in death. And as Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? He's actually standing here before you this morning asking you the same question. Do you believe it? He's asking you, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? In verse 27, Martha says, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Do you believe it this morning? Because this Easter Sunday, God is calling us once again to make the statement personal. 
that he's the resurrection and the life needs to be personal for you. We need to make that personal. You see, the victory of Jesus over death makes a difference in your life today and in your life every day. And when the resurrection makes that daily massive impact on your life personally, that's when it truly starts to make a massive impact on the world around us. Amen. Amen. Awesome. I'm going to ask you guys to stand up with me right now as we wrap up. And Jesus, we just want to come before you this morning and say, we love you so much. Jesus, we're so grateful for the statement of you saying that you are the life and you are the resurrection and and for the invitation that you have given us to walk into this new life. Lord, I thank you that in you there is abundance and there is freedom and there is faith and there is purpose. We get to live that. We thank you for the beautiful gift of your Holy Spirit that we get to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit through this life. We say thank you, Jesus, that there is hope, that there is hope in this life and that there is hope in the next life. And Jesus, we just want to come before you right now and say we pray that you would use our lives, Jesus, that you would take our lives. Lord, we don't want to waste our lives. We want to use them for your glory, for your kingdom, so that thousands of people around us would come to know this incredible resurrection, this incredible life that you offer us, Jesus. And just in a moment of every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, I just want to make an opportunity available. If you're here this morning, and maybe you don't even know what we're talking about, maybe you don't even know anything about Jesus, but actually Jesus might be knocking on the door of your heart this morning. This morning, maybe Jesus is saying to you, invite me in so that you can say that you live in the life that I give you. Jesus is calling every single one of us, and and maybe this morning he's speaking specifically to you. Maybe right now you feel him speaking directly to you. And so if you're in this room and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, you've never said, Jesus, take control of my life, I give you my heart, I want to create the moment for you this morning for that to happen. And so with every eye closed for privacy, if that is you so that I can pray for you, won't you stick up your hand nice and high in the air so that I can see you. Thank you. I see that hand at the back there. Thank you. I see that hand. If you want to say, Jesus, take control of my life. I surrender to you. Thank you. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I want to live all my days for you. Anyone else? Just a couple of more seconds. Thank you. Awesome. We thank you, Jesus, so much. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you for new brothers and sisters coming into your kingdom this morning. Lord, we thank you for that. And for those of you who've put up your hands, lifted up your hearts to Jesus, let's pray together. Jesus, I surrender myself to you. I give myself completely to you. Lord, take my life. I give you my heart. I choose to live out the rest of my days as a follower of Jesus. I thank you for this. In Jesus' powerful name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Can we say thank you, God, for those hands that went up this morning? Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And uh, across the weekend, we've had dozens of hands saying, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. How beautiful is that? That that is what God can do, that God is still in the business of changing lives. Amen. Amen. And we love him so much. Awesome. Well, who is ready to sing one more time? Come on now. That we serve a good God. A good God. And uh, we're so excited about this. And so band, are we ready? Yes? Come on, let's do it.